Recipes for Technical Trading Success in Cook's Kitchen. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cook's Kitchen. We're going to do a little uh, quick overview of artificial intelligence, the dreams and the reality. Uh, everybody knows what the singularity is. Ray Kurzweil, one of the most accurate futurists of all time, predicts you know, by 2045, um, computers AI will be have human level intelligence. Uh, we shall see. If you want some more perspectives, I recommend either of these two books. Um, I have them both, and and here's 50 more experts, 25 in each, where you can get uh, other perspectives from the people who are building AI and have been doing so for 30 years, uh, even before it was called machine learning and deep learning. So, all right, what are the big applications now? Obviously, we've got a big data flood. There's an automation imperative. Automate the software. Automate the factory. Driverless cars. Um, you know, and it's not to get rid of people and their jobs, but it's to be faster and better when the competition is eating your lunch. And then scientific research. Just no limit to what a supercomputer from NVIDIA can do for scientific research. Uh, crunching big data and then using... Um, inference and reinforcement learning, unsupervised learning. All right, uh, this McKinsey Global Study from 2018, I, I still reference it just because you see the, it, it highlights the biggest financial impact. It's retail, right? Um, how consumers spend, what they buy, what the fashion is, where they shop, where they live, what's our inventory. Um, machine learning, you know, is, is just, it, it creates exponential uh, growth for retail. Uh, you don't see it so much in pharmaceuticals right now, although in the scientific aspect, drug research, protein folding, um, aerospace, uh, you know, you know, better designs for everything. I'm, I'm, I'll try and show you one uh, of a better design for a racing sailing ship. Anyway, uh, here uh, McKinsey estimated, this is before COVID, and that's why I like to show it, just because I think the estimates are higher now since we just had um, you know, 10 years of digital transformation in 10 months during 2020, uh, the estimates were in the single digit trillions in value that AI could create for um, 19 industries across nine business functions. All right. So I did a presentation for my folks at Zach's today. I just, the mechanics and economics of machine learning and deep learning. It was an hour long. I'm going to try and condense this to <laughs> under 15 minutes. Um, you got to learn the terminology. There's so much terminology around there. You know, what's a node? What's a weight? What's a neural network? What's, what is machine learning? Uh, what is supervised learning, unsupervised learning, inference, uh, reinforcement learning, uh, convolutional networks, uh, propagation, back propagation, uh, activation function, all kinds of good stuff to learn. I did, um, it, it, this is what got me so interested in this in like 2016, 2017 was, the experiments that were going on that didn't really have any monetary value where uh, DeepMind, which Google bought, uh, cracked Go, the game of Go, which is much more complex than chess. Uh, and then you, uh, guys up at University of Alberta cracked Texas Hold'em uh, using uh, reinforcement learning, you know, teach the game to play itself millions of times. And then another cool thing about uh, up at out. Al- I think, I think it was the University of Alberta where they cracked Texas Hold'em was that they used something called counterfactual regret. The, you know, in, in, in poker, yeah, it's about probabilities, but you're also playing the person. So, um, you know, counterfactual regret is where a, a computer can learn to correct, self-correct from mistakes. You know, the bet was too high. The bet was too low. Uh, you know, should have folded, should have gone all in, that kind of thing. Really cool stuff. Uh, let's look. Let's watch a quick video of a um, of how a neural network operates because this is uh, this is really cool similar stuff. data. Let's understand how this is done. Let's construct a neural network that differentiates between a square, circle, and triangle. Neural networks are made up of layers of neurons. These neurons are the core processing units of the network. First, we have the input layer, which receives the input. The output layer predicts our final output. In between exist the hidden layers which perform most of the computations required by our network. Here's an image of a circle. This image is composed of 28 by 28 pixels. 
which make up for 784 pixels. Each pixel is fed as input to each neuron of the first layer. Neurons of one layer are connected to neurons of the next layer through channels. Each of these channels is assigned a numerical value known as weight. The inputs are multiplied to the corresponding weights and their sum is sent as input to the neurons in the hidden layer. Each of these neurons is associated with a numerical value called the bias, which is then added to the input sum. This value is then passed through a threshold function called the activation function. The result of the activation function determines if the particular neuron will get activated or not. An activated neuron transmits data to the neurons of the next layer over the channels. In this manner, the data is propagated through the network. This is called forward propagation. In the output layer, the neuron with the highest value fires and determines the output. The values are basically a probability. For example, here, our neuron associated with square has the highest probability. Hence, that's the output predicted by the neural network. Of course, just by a look at it, we know our neural network has made a wrong prediction. But how does the network figure this out? Note that our network is yet to be trained. During this training process, along with the input, our network also has the output fed to it. The predicted output is compared against the actual output to realize the error in prediction. The magnitude of the error indicates how wrong we are, and the sign suggests if our predicted values are higher or lower than expected. The arrows here give an indication of the direction and magnitude of change to reduce the error. This information is then transferred backward through our network. This is known as backpropagation. Now, based on this information, the weights are adjusted. This cycle of forward propagation and back propagation is iteratively performed with multiple inputs. This process continues until our weights are assigned such that the network can predict the shapes correctly in most of the cases. This brings our training process to an end. All right, I had to show you that because this is the best video explanation I have found of machine learning on YouTube. Um, and it's from Simple Learn. Uh, go, go there, check out what they got, subscribe. Uh, big props to them for, you know, a, uh, a couple of minutes of just super good explanation of how machine learning works. All right. So had to show you that. Back to my slides here. Um, eh, that's uh, from, you know, machine learning, deep learning is all around us. You know, medical imaging, protein folding research, banks, robotics, chemicals, software. Um, hey, I just saw this this morning. Facebook is going to use the, uh, <laughs> they're going to allow advertisers to sort out uh, people who post too much politically. You know, the great thing about Facebook is they use AI, so you can customize your audience. You can target, you know, the gender, the, the income, the location, the shopping habits, whatever of your target audience. And corporations still want to use Facebook for that targeting power for their ads. Um, but now they'll be able to sort out anybody who's posting too much politically. So that's, <laughs> that's, uh, the power of AI at the, uh, the evil empire of Facebook. Um, I love Splunk and AlterX. You should learn what they do. They, they create a toolbox workbench for a company to mine and model all of their dark data and, and learn from it automatically. They can create machine learning pipelines. Um, this is something I did in 2017. Also, um, even before the, the deep stack, and deep mind stuff with Go and Texas Hold'em, I was I I coined the phrase you know get your MPA in deep learning. MPA stands for massively parallel architectures. This is how Je you know Jensen Wong created the GPU for gaming, and then he realized oh my God this is the platform it's gold for machine learning to have massively parallel architectures, and um, you know so I just. Uh, I highlighted this. What was funny is on the same day that, um, so look at the Riken thing here, right? On in on March 6th, 2017, uh, Japan's largest research facility with the, uh, Riken with the supercomputer, they installed 24 NVIDIA DGX1s. And at the time, a DGX1 was like, 
you know, a few petaflops of processing power. Um, and now let's just, let's just review the processing power here. So, uh, a petaflop is in here, you know, 15 zeros, right? Um, a teraflop, uh, I think the last Xbox had like six teraflops. An exaflop is 18 zeros. Okay. So, uh, you know, to match an exaflop, you'd have to perform one calculation every second for 31 billion years. That's how fast, uh, and a flop stands for floating point operations, uh, in case you didn't know. So this is the great thing about NVIDIA is they, you know, in the size of a shoebox, you know, like a, a, a Volta card, they pack in 21 billion transistors. Then when you stack those together, um, you know, by the hundreds, then you get, you know, supercomputers. By the way, Tesla just unveiled their top um, AV, I assume stands for Autonomous Vehicle Training Supercomputer, powered by NVIDIA A100 GPUs. Uh, these are probably the Amperes. Um, and actually, NVIDIA dropped using the name Tesla for their cards, you know, to avoid confusion. But this, this is supposedly the number five supercomputer in the world now. Uh, and they call it incredible GPU cluster um, for autopilot and full self-driving. So this is going to be exciting to see what Tesla can do with this. Um, oh, chip design. This is the paper that Google just rolled out. So this is where AI gets really exciting is in, you know, software that can write itself and chips, uh, you know, AI that can design chips. Google scientists published this in Nature about two weeks ago, um, and it's about chip floor planning. They're using AI to design the physical layout of, you know, uh, computer boards in like hours versus what it would take humans, you know, months to do. So that's, that's the exciting stuff going on there. You know, anytime you get bored, go to the NVIDIA newsroom. Um, I, in one of the McKinsey reports, one of the most recent ones, uh, they said, uh, this is from, oh, this is actually a couple of years old, but, uh, they said AI is hard to scale. And I'm like, don't tell NVIDIA that because th these are two stories just from yesterday about how they're scaling AI for enterprises uh, and, and you're seeing it everywhere. Um, this is a more recent piece from McKinsey uh, in April of this year where they highlight the uh, the Emirates Team New Zealand um, uh, sail sailing races using reinforcement learning to design new hydrofoils. Um, which is just, you know, simply incredible. Let's see if there's something else I wanted to show you in my slide deck here. Um, we talked about that. We talked about that. Yeah, I think I covered it all. Um, there's no shortage of stuff to learn about machine learning, deep learning, and AI. And, uh, you know, it's just going to continue to uh, to change the world. One thing I was worried about, oh, if you want to copy, I just did a, uh, a UFO debunking this week. I, on Monday, I did my UFO debunking because we're expecting the report from the Pentagon this week. And, you know, I, I tried to explain to people, listen, here's why UFOs are not real aliens. And uh, so if you want to copy that report, just email uh, ultimate at zax.com and we'll send it out to you. But uh, I recommended a small company in sort of in the middle of the chip space, and that's Cadence Design Systems. And they do EDA and SDE. E EDA is Electronic Design Automation, and SDE is System Design Enablement. This is like the software that designs chips. When that Google news came out, I thought Cadence would be in trouble. They've rallied. So, um, you know, AI is the future, and, uh, you know, the, the chips just keep getting better to make this stuff happen and to make us more productive. All right. We'll talk to you next week.